All right, imagine an alternative universe. Alternative universe, me, I wasn't crazy about investing as I seem to be on this channel. For FYI, for everybody that don't know, I'm way more crazier. If you let Alex tell it, I'm way more crazier in person than I am on this video. But let's just pretend I'm in an alternative universe and I didn't know what I know or do what I do. And then now I wake up and I'll share my age at 42 years old and I didn't invest nothing. I've been working at a job. Um, I looked in the mirror and I realized I got, you know, pseudo about 20 more years left before I hit retirement age. What are some things that I would do right now if I'm starting at zero in my investment savings account to try to get my life to be better when I hit retirement age instead of sitting in that grind of still having to work in until I'm in my 70s, 80s just to make ends meet to get by. Um, Alex, I'm gonna start off with you. I'm gonna give you some ideas of what I'm gonna do, but you got about a trillion more years before you reach that age of 60, 65. What would you do if you, you know, fast forward in life and you didn't have nothing or put yourself in the shoes of, you know, friends or family members that's in that situation? What would you tell them to do? I would tell them to get an additional income and invest more aggressively. And by additional income, it could be another job. It could be a side hustle or something. But basically the idea creating that you have an additional income that you can just either completely invest or you can switch it and then start investing with your, you know, the income that you're pulling in from your job. And I've seen this uh, with, say, my own mother that I'm trying to help her for her retirement, where she has her job and then she has her small little business um, in a salon and she the more she makes at that salon the more she contributes to her for her 401k and uh, at work and so the more she's starting to become less dependent on that income and basically it's like picking one that you'd rather be with and for her working at the salon doesn't feel like work and she'd rather stay at that and do that every day than to be at a nine to five job where you have all this responsibility and stuff. So the idea I don't think is to maybe get rid of say, you know, it's not to get rid of an income and just sit on a pile of cash to in order to be in retirement but they're definitely going to have to take way more risk if they want to get to a level that is like that and i'm not making any recommendations but i know we have people in the class that have pulled out equity and from their home and invested in the stock market you're gonna have to like really crunch and figure out what you want to do but you're gonna have to figure out a system where you're living on way less than you make and investing that money or that difference into a, a retirement fund. That's why I think the best for them is to create an additional income, whether it be, like I said, an, an additional job or a side hustle and start to build that up and then use one to actually invest, use one to live on. Because I'm assuming this question comes with people that are maybe single and not married. Because if you're married, you could really work it out way better. But if you're single, you really got to put your head together and start figuring out what you're going to do. Right. And and I agree with you. you having a second source of income is paramount. Because the, the things that I'm going to say, and I'm glad you said so, a second source of income first because i was going to totally omit that from my uh battle plan but having a second source of income is paramount and the reason why i'm gonna say that because i always get pushed back when i when i say what what i'm about to say now i always say you need to collapse every you need to look in the mirror and collapse everything that's not a need in your life and then all the money that's that's not a need in your life you need to use it to invest. And I will I will give some recommendations in a second. 
but when I give that recommendation and and I'm saying that it's because that's what I did. When I was $250,000 in debt, no job, I collapsed everything. I collapsed everything that was not a need in my life. And need, and what I mean by need is lights, gas, water, shelter. That's it. I'm not meaning living in Beverly Hills, having a five bedroom house shelter. I mean, shelter somewhere to lay your head uh i remember i am the one who went from a 3,000 square foot house to a 600 square foot apartment when i was broke not because i got evicted because i needed to cut out all the wants and only focus on the needs i went from paying 1400 a month mortgage to 600 a month in rent i moved to a good side of town to a worse side of town not saying it was in the projects but it was not as prestigious as the town, the side of town I was living in, and I moved to a uh, worse side of town just to cut out my want. That's the first thing. But and then I get this pushback every time I say that because everybody want to add everything in there that's really needs that's want. So when you added in the fact of having additional income and then using that income to use it to invest, that's great. But they still need to cut out their wants because if they if they get additional income, then they're just going to make up more needs, make up more needs, make up more needs. Then they still gonna have a little bit to invest because you know how life creep work. People make more money, then they spend more, make more, spend more. But for me, getting that uh, a second source of income is good, but I will put it in reverse. Write down what your needs is. You take care of strictly your needs. You get your a second source of income. So now you're saving money from all the wants that you are spending on. Like you said, because they're older, they have to be more aggressive. So if you start off at 20, 20 years old and you invest a hundred dollars a month, you can get, I mean, if you're in a good, you know, index fund or something like that, you can get, you know, roughly about a million dollars in your retirement account, you know, being very conservative six, you know, six to 8% a year. But once you travel further in life and then you get older, that number per month to get to a million goes drastically higher. And I believe you know, you in your 40s, you need to be up there about $1,200 a month just to start throwing away and being more aggressive, getting into the index funds to make it happen. Dave Ramsey said good growth stock mutual funds. I just say index funds to keep it simple. And then if you want to know, okay, but what index funds should I get in? It's simple. Uh, SPY, SPY is a, a index fund that mimics the S&P 500, Standards and Poor's 500. That is the that is the stock market in general, the top 503 companies in the United States. You're diversified, you're in there. It averages historically over a hundred year time period between nine to eleven percent per year. There you go. You can go VLOO. That's another index fund that mimics the stock market. You can go NASDAQ QQQ. Those are the ticker symbols for these index funds. Or you can get an index mutual fund that mimics these indices also. But the NASDAQ 100 is the uh, top 100 tech companies in the world. And if you believe technology is our future and that's where most of the money will go, then that's how you take advantage of the avenue. Don't go individual stock picking. Don't be this uh, cryptocurrency lottery ticket. There's nothing wrong with having a little crypto in your portfolio if you want it. But I'm trying to get you from living on your kid's couch to, you know, have some pride about yourself when you're in your 60, 65 years old area. But that's what you do. But you have to be aggressive. Like Alex said, you have to, have to, have to get additional income. So you got to cut out all the party and all the, all the birthday parties and all that other stuff that you was doing and all those gifts you was buying for kids, grandkids, friends, mom and them, cousins, them, all that money needs to be aggressively invested for your financial future. And then after that, once you start seeing the ball rolling, then you will see the opportunity that's out there. Then you will feel more pride about yourself because I was 28 years old, uh, a little bit older than Alex is now. Well, a lot of bit older than Alex is now. I think Alex, he's like three and a half, but a lot of bit older than Alex is now. And when I say flat broke, I was flat broke. I was flat, I was so broke. It was, it was insane. 
And then those were the things that I did. I worked on added income. I worked on being aggressive in the, in the stock market and those things. And that's how I, I uh, got to where I am now. And that's why me and Alex can sit here and talk about what people should do is because I've been through it. Alex going through it and we're, we're changing our family dynamic, our family tree, and we're not trying to keep keep perpetuating the family curses that we had before. But Alex, you got anything to add to that? Yeah, I'm glad you brought the part where you need to cut out everything that's not a necessity because what people fail to understand is a financial journey is not make a ton of income and that's it. It's so it's beyond having just additional income financial going into a financial journey is your habits that's the only thing that's going to actually make you successful or prosperous and a lot of people cannot break their habits habits of wanting to impress other people because of their luxury apartment wanting to impress people because of the car that they drive the clothes that they wear the restaurants they can go to the events that they can go to the vacations they can take and if you're really concerned about not being able to retire you're going to have to cut out all of that without any excuse including holidays and birthdays and i'm glad you brought that up too because a lot of people they want something but they don't want it bad enough and if you really want it bad enough and if you're in a bad position to where you're literally not going to be able to retire and you're going to die working then why would you not go the extreme route to cut out that stuff in your life and it's just something that you're gonna have to put a value on do you value this one friend's birthday more than you your ability to retire and if that's so then you have other issues that you have to fix but people have to change their mindset and change their habits and that's the biggest thing out of this yeah and and the thing is alex to your point is most people are scared of the peer pressure. I know they talk about peer pressure when you're, you know, you're a teenager, but people have peer pressure their whole life. You know, people, oh, I have to buy this person a gift. Their birthday's coming next year. They're going to come the year after that and every year following. If, if you can't talk to your loved ones, your friends and say, hey, this is the journey I need to be on so I can ensure that my retirement years are are better than they currently will be if I stay on the same path. If they don't understand, it wasn't your friend at all. It wasn't your family at all. Because I'll never forget the conversation I had with a good buddy of mine and we was out partying all the time and I was nervous when I said it. I ain't gonna lie and sit here and be like, oh, I was a man about it. When I said it, I was like, I was scared of the blowback, but I just told him, hey, I can't do this no more. I have to worry about my financial future and I got to get out of debt. And I'm sitting there, I'm bracing for impact. I'm like, it's like, oh, waiting for what's the blowback that's going to come from it. The only reply he ever said, he said, I'm so proud of you. Let me know if you need anything. And hopefully I can get that mindset soon also. Cause he was older. Hopefully I can get that mindset also. Yeah. It took him a couple of years after I did, I did it, but he got on that same mindset also. And he's living a, a great life and he's, you know, pushing up there close to that 60, 60 year old age range himself. And now he's in a, a very good spot, but that's what a lot of people is. They worried about what people are going to say. I mean, me, I just, after I said, I had that conversation with him cause he was like the closest person in my life at the time. Uh, everybody else was easy talking to family and stuff like that. It was easy. And yeah, they they snickered, they talked, they did all that stuff when I when I said it. But look at me now. Those same people that laughed or snickered that didn't do nothing and they just kept on living the life. They now they sitting there, oh man, how do you do it? How, how can I get where you are? Uh we had this conversation many years ago. You was laughing instead of not looking at looking in the mirror, looking at yourself and your conditions. That's why you're still struggling instead of going at it. But people that's worried about the blowback they'll get from it, don't worry about it. Because at the end of the day, you have to live your own life. And those same people that you worried about gifts from, they won't be there to save you when you're truly in need. 
With all that being said, guys, hit the like button, share this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next one.